getting the asset. The asset is live on the Unity Asset Store. You will need to be logged in to your Unity account, and then press the Add to My Assets button. From there, head into your Unity project. From inside Unity, depending on the version you're using, you will need to import the package. Now, in 2020.0 or later, you will find that it is in the package manager. If you're using an earlier version, it is under Window Asset Store. Make sure you have the latest version by checking the script header comment. There has been some complications with the package manager not importing the latest version, so please make sure you have the up to date version when using this asset. We recommend to import all the files in the package, but some files can be ignored, such as the example folder and the resources folder if you wish. The example folders are a bit spread out because it's example. Once imported, you'll see the folder in your project, that's when you know you're ready to go. Next, you need to set up your save data class. First, you need to delete the save data class that came with the asset. This is just a placeholder because you actually need to make your own one. To do this, just delete the, the one provided in the scripts folder of the asset. Go to Save Manager, Scripts, Card Games, Save Manager, and find the save data class and delete it. When, once you get to the reload, you'll find you'll get a few errors. This is fine, we're going to fix this next. To fix this, we're going to open up the Save Data Editor. This can be found under Card Games, Save Manager, and data, Save Data Editor, found on the top navigation bar. This will open the editor window. This can be docked any way you like, just like you're seen on game views, but we recommend you keep it undocked. There are three tabs. The first helps you create the state of the class. The second allows you to edit it once you've made it, so you don't have to make a new one each time. And the third one just tells you a bit about the asset and provides links to documentation and the Discord server. In the Create New State Editor tab, click the Add Field button to add and to make a new field. Each field is one variable. The data type is whatever data type you want a variable to be. The variable name is what you call in code, so make sure you use any kind of syntax you want to like here, like Hammer case or Pascal case. Below that, you have the option to make the variable a list or an array. If you're using a class field, which is an option, you'll have to put the class name next to the variable name. This is just essentially has to be the class name you're, you're making a, a version of. So, for instance, if you want a class that's, say, player stats, you'd put player stats in there. You can add additional fields by continuing to press the add field button. You can add as many as you like, you can go on for as long as you want. You can remove fields by pressing the red button in the bottom right corner of the variable you want to remove. When you are happy, press the generate class button. This will make the class. The editor will reload and it should be placed in the directory shown on the screen. Now you're ready to actually use the asset. When it comes to implementation, this is a rather subjective section. This is because it depends on where you want to save when the new game. In this example below, I'm going to use essentially like an adventure game where the user can go to a pause menu and save the game whenever they like, and also load the game from the menu. On screen has a custom class. You'll note that the variable data types are all actually ones that are selectable from the save data editor we just used to make a class. Technically, the serialized field properties are not needed here, unless as they are public variables, but while I was coding this, I forgot to remove them, so apologies. So for my implementation, I had a game manager, which essentially handles the saving and loading. The script called and save and load methods from the manager itself. The game manager has a method that creates a file if it doesn't exist already exists. This is simply done by doing save manager.load game equals equals null and an if statement. That essentially checks if it's null, which it will turn if it doesn't find one. If it finds one, it will return the values. This all happens on the UT wait method, so it's ready to go when you essentially load the game up. In my example, the saving and loading is called in the same script. Simply put, the top method handles the saving and the bottom method handles the loading. The save method, simply put, goes through each of the, of the fields in our save data class and updates them. It updates them via a game manager reference that we have because we're updating the save data class that's on the game manager. In this instance, I have a save data class instance on my game manager, and I'm updating the variables via a reference to the game manager. So, for instance, game manager dot player stats equals the player stats. On screen now is how to save a vector, for instance. This is slightly different because using a save vector to class, which is our own custom class to save vectors. We have to do this for any kind of vectors and colors you want to save with our asset. It's slightly different, but it's quite simple. You essentially you make a new instance of it, then set the value, and then set it to the save value. On loading, we'll get to that in a moment, but it's very similar. Once that's done, I simply just call game manager save game, which essentially calls the save manager save game with the data file on the game manager. And that's it. The, the, the game is saved. Now to load it, it's pretty much the exact same, but in reverse. So we essentially load the game into the save data file we already have in the game manager class. Then we set the values in a class to the values from the game manager save data class. Note that when loading a save vector or a color, you simply just have to use the variable name dot vector2 or dot color. As simple as that, just to load it. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully this helped you get an idea of how the asset works. Obviously I can't be too detailed about the implementation, it's just because it's so subjective dependent on what you're making in your game. 
If you need any extra help, we have a community Discord server which we can chat in on a Save Magic channel, or you can email us. Note this is a one man studio and it's UK based, so if you send a message at 1 in the morning, I will not be answering you until about 9 am, so please make sure you message at appropriate times. I aim to respond within 48 hours of any messages, and all links to the asset documentation and anything else can be found in the description below. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments if you have any, and I hope you have a good day.